Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today we're going to talk about a pretty rare tumor, but first a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of the screen. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only and is not intended to be used for medical advice. If you or a loved one have a question, please talk to your doctor. Today we're going to be talking about a tumor, but first I wanted to give a shout out to um, University of Michigan, they have this virtual slide box that um, that is very, very helpful and useful. So this is where I'm getting a lot of this um, uh, material uh, to talk to you about. So please check them out if you get a chance. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is uh, a lesion that was in the brain or spinal cord. The neurosurgeon went in, took the lesion out, gave it to me, the pathologist, and now I'm looking at it under a microscope to make a diagnosis. The first thing I like to do when looking at these kinds of tumors is to get an overall feel of what's going on. So in this low power view, we can see that there's kind of a, a nodular, semi-well well delineated um, lobule of lesion here. Along the edges, we can see that there is a blue color and this is ink that the pathologist or pathologist assistant uh, put on the edges of the, uh, of, of the lesion when they were uh, looking at it macroscopically in the grossing room. Um, and this is to help delineate the, the borders of the lesions, when, especially when you're talking about margins. Um, and so if we look a little bit closer, it's always important to get a sense of where you are when you're, when, when you're looking at these um, types of lesions under a microscope. So I always try to see if I can find any normal tissue. And so the easiest way to do that, to find normal tissue, is to kind of look along the edges and see if, that, uh, if there's any normal tissue along the edges here. And we do see that here, okay? So what we have here is on the top right-hand corner of the screen, there is a lesion here. And then on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, there is non-neoplastic brain tissue. And I say non-neoplastic because it's not exactly normal. It's, 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 it's very unhappy brain tissue, okay? But it is non-neoplastic brain tissue. And importantly, the, the, the um, delineation between the tumor up here and the non-neoplastic brain tissue down here is very sharply demarcated here. Okay, so the, the borders of this tumor are, are very well delineated. And that's important to, to um, take into consideration when we're talking about different tumors of the CNS. So something, um, so, so this would not be something that you would see in the diffuse gliomas, which diffusely infiltrate into the surrounding brain tissue. Um, this is a well-circumscribed, well-delineated, well-demarcated lesion that is um, very nicely separated from the surrounding tissue. And so that's something important to keep in mind uh, when we're talking about the differentials. If we look a little bit uh, closer and we inspect the uh, the lesion itself, we can see that it's, it's very um, a vascular lesion, um, but it's not vascular in the way we would think of as an AVM or a hemangioma or something like that. The blood vessels are actually very thin and very delicate. Uh, the endothelial cells are um, pretty flat and unremarkable. Um, and so this is a lesion of the stromal tissue. It's not really a lesion of blood vessels per se, although there are a lot of blood vessels in this lesion. So we can say that um, there's a neoplasm here, but it's not really a neoplasm of blood vessels. It's a neoplasm of the stromal tissue. And when we will look on higher power. This is as high power as I can go uh, for this program. But we take a look, and some of these... Um, abnormal cells, they look a little, the cytoplasm looks a little vesicular, they look a little foamy, they have a little bit of a clear cell appearance. But it's not clear cells in what you would think of 
uh, for um, clear cell variant of a renal cell carcinoma where that's really, really clear. This one, it kind of has a vesicula vesicular look, almost kind of a foamy look. There's a few little granules here and there. Um, and, and so this is uh, important to keep in the differential of um, possible metastatic renal cell carcinoma clear cell type, okay? When you have these cleared out um, cells, but they're not really all that clear. Um, they do have somewhat of a vacuolated vesicular appearance. So why do I keep bringing up renal cell carcinoma? Well, this particular lesion is commonly found in patients who have VHL, otherwise known as von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. And von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, those patients commonly get clear cell renal cell carcinoma, which can metastasize to the brain. So what we have here is a well-demarcated, well-delineated lesion that's clear cells, but kind of foamy, vesiculated clear cells with a lot of blood vessels, but the blood vessels, they all look relatively normal. They don't look like they're neoplastic blood vessels. Um, and this is a very, very typical appearance of a hemangioblastoma. And hemangioblastomas, one of the major differentials to consider, especially when you're dealing with a small biopsy, is renal cell carcinoma, because both of these things can occur in patients with von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. The other thing I'd like to point out here is that if we look around, there's a lot of cautery artifact. And so we just saw how vascular this lesion is. Um, and so that explains why we see so much cautery artifact. Because when that uh, neurosurgeon was taking the lesion out, they had to cauterize this lesion a lot in order to stop the bleeding uh, while they were excising this lesion. In addition, when we're going around the edges here, we can see that there's non-neoplastic brain tissue. And then it also looks like there is um, a lot of blood vessels along the edge here. Let's go to another area. Okay, there's a lot of blood vessels along the edge here. And so sometimes, uh, or a lot of times, these lesions, they like to be along the surface of the, of the brain or spinal cord. Um, and so they're usually budding underneath the leptomeningeal surface vessels. Um, and so even though they are not extra ax axial, sometimes they can look like extra axial lesions on uh, imaging because they're usually very, very superficial uh, neoplasms that like to go under the surface of the leptomeninges um, and we can see these large vessels here which are likely the leptomeningeal vessels and the tumor is just kind of growing up underneath them. So other uh, items to consider in the differential uh, we already mentioned renal cell carcinoma uh, sometimes uh, you can get these kinds of vessels in hemangioparasitomas. Um, sometimes you can have um, meningiomas, particularly the microcystic or angiomatous variants of meningiomas can look very similar to this. And so you'd have to do some stains um, in order to um, uh, verify the diagnosis, although this is a very, very typical appearance of it. If you were concerned, you could do some immunostains. And one of the major um, positive immunostains that you expect to see uh, labeling uh, this tumor, which is hemangioblastoma, one of the major um, positive immunostains is inhibin, alpha inhibin. Um, and so this would stain the um, the neoplastic stromal cells, these uh, sort of cleared out cells, um, whereas this would be negative, the uh, inhibin would be negative in meningiomas, it would be negative in hemangioparasitomas, um, and other items that you would consider in the differential. Okay, so this is our quick review of hemangioblastomas. Please join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology. Thank you.